uh, I would like to get your perspective on the trajectory of semiconductor industry. So right now we are seeing three phenomena happening. One, AI is pushing the requirements on high compute and reduced size, while we all know that Moore's law is uh, reaching its physical limitations. Second, big companies are investing in their own semiconductor initiatives for vertical integration rather than getting semiconductor products from you know, other semiconductor-focused companies. And third, even at the country level, take US example, heavy investments are happening for domestic chip manufacturing and programs development, reducing the reliance on global supply chain. So if you combine these three, where do you see semiconductor industry heading in next five to 10 years? Are we moving towards a healthier ecosystem or should we be concerned about something? Yeah, those are th three important uh, questions, right? I, I tend to look at, um, at at questions of the future shape of things through the lens of uh, critical uncertainties or uh, uh, tectonic forces that are shifting. Okay, and so so there are there are a couple, and I'll start on a micro level, right? Of 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 the company manager, because I'm sure most of your audience is mostly concerned with that, right? Initially, anyway, um, and and that is uh, uncertainty number one. Are we going to get the use cases for advanced computing, and that includes AI, but is not limited to AI? Are we going to get those use cases right? Um, that's unfortunately not a given. Despite all the hype around artificial intelligence, we're seeing a lot of companies getting very good uh, ROI uh, and, and other uh, metric increases, favorable increases in other metrics uh, from their AI experiments. But then we're seeing a lot of companies saying, we're not getting those, and we, are, we may be terminating some of our generative AI experiments, okay? And that is not because generative AI is, uh, you, you know, is is bad as a bad tool, uh, it, because for every case that's not working, we we find another case or two that is working. It is that too many organizations are not uh, uh, ensuring the backward compatibility of these uh, Gen AI experiments with product strategy, business unit, or corporate strategy, right? It, with the commensurate. Uh, financial metrics uh, or, or some kind of impact metric that would signal that we are making progress. And sometimes it's not money. Sometimes it's learning towards something, right? Or building a knowledge base or building a data pool or whatever it may be. But you have to define that. So, so don't blame AI. Look internally first. Are you transforming your company, your processes alongside uh, the AI advances out there? Uh, and if not, then fix that and you may see the ROI. So that's number one, right? Why am I saying that? Because, because you know, the remember 2000, the dot-com bust, right? Uh, what happened there was that on a use case level, on an application level, uh, we weren't seeing enough ROI, right? There were too many applications that weren't making enough money, as it were. Uh, and therefore, all the upstream investment in infrastructure, including, of course, compute power today with AI, right, uh, wasn't being amortized. And so so what I'm afraid of is that downstream, people are too loosey-goosey and too lax about defining those tight connections to make money that will then warrant all these purchases of very expensive GPUs, much less any forays into quantum computing, right? So that's what I'm afraid, uh, uh, afraid of. And so that is the first critical uncertainty that will play on or will shape the future uh, of the uh, semiconductor ecosystem. The next uncertainty then uh, is, is that of talent. Can we actually train people quickly enough to make use of all the compute power we're now creating? And can we train enough uh, talent to go into those new fabs we're building? That's actually one of the problems that have been flagged to us here in the United States that you know TSMC is bringing back uh, uh, bringing uh, uh, fabs to the United States, but we don't have all the talent anymore that it takes, uh, at least not at the same level of proficiency as the Taiwanese have built. And so, so we need to train hard and fast, right? Um, and so, uh, and so that's that's the second one. Now, uh, that's on an industry level, right? If I go all the way to the macro level, then the critical uncertainty, of course, is. What's going to happen in China domestically, politically, but also economically? Same with the United States. 
Both are very wobbly right now. Xi Jinping has a lot going on. Here in the United States, we've got our own political battles, right? We've got a good, healthy economy, but that could change if the politics go upside down uh, or continue to go upside down, I should say. And both of those will determine what the future of uh, uh, geopolitics is uh, and conflict between the U.S. and China. And of course, including whether China will grab Taiwan, right? And that's an easy connection now back to the semiconductor industry, right? The more we are at each other's throats, the more the United States will want to uh, repatriate supply chains for semiconductors, as we've already done. Uh, now, make no mistake about it. I think, generally speaking, it's a good thing to have resilience in the semiconductor supply chain, not just because of geopolitics, but also because of climate change and many other disruptions around the world. And so, so yes, it's not exactly efficient at this point, but we'll have to bring efficiencies back uh, into uh, into focus. And then lastly, of course, the big uncertainty around quantum computing. What will happen with that, right? Well, we've been touting quantum computing for 10 plus years now. Um, and uh, my hunch is it'll take another 10 years or so before we see more uh, uh, deployment of quantum computing at greater scale into consumer type industries. Right now, it's really a playground for big, complex corporate problems, government problems, science problems. And we're making good strides, right? First and foremost, uh, Microsoft, Google, IBM, but also some startups. The Chinese are making forays into this. But it'll take another 10 years for this thing at least to shake out. And then the question is, you know, will it shake out because uh, uh, or will it stay a very niche computing application? Uh, you know, we've 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 had this before with location based services, with virtual reality. Right. Uh, these have been, you know, hyped up for the past 20 years. And so we're on this 20 year hype cycle with quantum computing. Where will it go? Right. So from the most micro to the most macro and contextual and esoteric, those are the critical uncertainties that will shape the ecosystem. Now, near term, all right, so near near term meaning less than 10 years, uh, I would say, um, you know, are we, we're going to see a, a fragmentation of the design, the chip design industry, uh, because we are seeing more companies now designing their own in-house or with the help of, of, of design shops. Um, but we're not necessarily going to see a fragmentation of the actual chip manufacturing uh, space. And I'm oversimplifying, right? Your listeners, of course, understand that there are many, many different types of chips, right? And and so it's impossible to do it all justice in a few minutes. But, you know, for simplicity's sake, we are going to continue to see TSMC uh, and a couple of the other Taiwanese manufacturers, as well as Samsung, and now again, Intel, and maybe one or two Chinese companies dominate the global market for, oh, and then there's Infineon in Germany, of course, right? So so it's a, it's a fairly concentrated market that will probably remain like that simply because the investments you have to make to build a fab, to train the people, uh, and then the very delicate management of the utilization of those fabs against the market demand and supply of resources and things like that really requires extraordinary depth of, of pockets and cash, uh, as well as expertise that is not easily uh, is not easily found, right? Um, and so, so they may be building more fabs internationally, like Intel has done in Germany, for instance, right? But it's still Intel, and so the market is probably going to stay more concentrated on that end, whereas on design, we're likely going to see greater uh, fragmentation. Thank you very much, Olaf, for participating in our show. I'm sure our audience learned a lot from your insights. It's my pleasure, Faisal. Uh, I hope I can be back again uh, for another great conversation. You and your audience be well. I'm sure. Thanks again.